Hi, thank you very much for uh, coming. So, as much as you all want to know about public art and all the 170 different pieces of art I've got the pleasure of installing in Rhode Island in the last five years, I really wanted to tell a personal story. I wanted to talk about what makes this stuff happen and why is public art so important to our community as a whole, not just Providence, but the rest of the world. For me, it began when I was born, and I was born as a very dyslexic child. I was constantly outside the box, and I was trying to figure out how to adapt and fit inside the box when the community around me was doing all these other different types of things. What I learned early on is I had the ability to sit in a complicated room and to absorb information and to understand what that meant and to feel comfortable within a very complex setting. So when I walked into a city like Providence, as you see here in this picture, this is a normal city. And when the city wants to evolve, many ways it wants to make it simpler. It wants to make it easier to operate. It wants to make it easier to understand and manage risk. So you have a basic architectural challenge. How do you make something that's as simple as an intersection be interactive, but also as it is? For me, in my brain, being dyslexic, that is not how it works. I constantly am evolving and looking at everything that I'm seeing from pictures and videos and content and social media, and I really want to understand how to put that in. So what happens is my brain starts flashing, and I say, maybe this should be there, maybe this should be there, maybe this should be there. What's going to be more interesting? Is it going to be what the city is interested in or the community around me? Or is, do I come to the table as a dyslexic person and really stand up for myself and to really push the boundaries as to what should actually happen? The end result is this, three years later, after three more sculptures were installed before this. For me, this is really important because it allows a city to breathe. Art and design in public spaces does more than just art and design. It allows a community to actually engage with it. The idea that people can appreciate this for the color black or red or lights or plants or whatever those things are, but it allows you to come together and to take a deep breath. Who here is breathing right now? <laughs> are you taking a deep breath? Can you take, it, take a deep breath? <gasps> All right, your turn. Ah, thanks, you totally helped me with my jitters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to normality. So this is a city, big blank walls. Um, what's the storytelling? How do you engage with it? What's going to inspire you as a person? Are you going to want to live in the city? Is this something that's interesting? Is this something that's going to inspire you? For me as a dyslexic person walking around and trying to understand what I'm hearing in the coffee shops, in the bars, friends and artists, designers, architects, all these different parts and pieces, for me, I want to see this. Breathe. <laughs> This took over 10 years of work, getting permission from building owners, from all these parts and pieces. It can be very complicated and very fascinating at the same time. But for me, it's about breathing. It's about engaging with your community, taking renderings and drawings and meeting with people, and not just politicians and city officials, but also youth people on the corner, the homeless person in the alleyway, the person in the church, going to community meetings. This is a lot of time, a lot of information. But for me, it's about learning. It's about absorbing the information. It comes back to my roots of being outside the box and learning how to process information. A city has a lot of ups and downs. You can have music festivals, you can have things for a weekend. But as you have art that you want to live with, art that you want to breathe with, art that you want to not understand right away, those are the things that are fascinating to me as a person. And I want to figure out how to do more of that in a way that is sustainable and more long term. So this was another project that we are the next level of engagement, sort of a, an example of what could happen. Is this interesting or is that interesting? Black and white, color, monotone, human figures, abstract art, maybe you combine them. Which one do you want to breathe into? Which one do you want to tell your kids about? Which are the ones that you want to come back to? What are the ones that have the most layers? How about that one? Yeah. 
I'm guessing you're, you're clapping, you like that. <laughs> this is a 120 by 100 foot wall. For me, this is a big challenge, not just from the physic physicality of painting it, or n me not painting it, but organizing an organization that could actually facilitate something like this within a city that doesn't have a public art program. But it was also about just really trying to understand all the bits and pieces. So when you reach out to an artist and you say, come to this city and be inspired by this place, what does that mean to them? They're not from Rhode Island or Providence. They're coming here under a residency. So they're constantly asking for more information. They want to learn more about the space and it's on us as an organization and as a community to share that information, to breathe into it, to take the time it needs to really understand what all of that's going to come together for that person that's only going to be here for 10 days to paint this mural. So you can go big and that can be fascinating, but it doesn't mean you're in the neighborhoods. It doesn't mean that you're in the, the spaces that are even more complicated. And for me, that's even more interesting. It's really understanding how youth come together, how communities come together with parents and kids. This is a, another side project trying to go into the public school system. As you can see, this is a, a part of a local uh, public high school classical. And as you can see, they actually painted the windows gray. This is actually the art room. It took over four years of working with the schools, not just the school principals and the school uh, uh, districts, but also the teachers and the youth and everyone involved, and trying to understand how do we make the walls of the schools tell stories? How are those different layers that could bring all those pieces together? And why does it have to be something that's more conventional like you'd find in a textbook? What if it's this? What if it's an idea of razzle-dazzle? This is an actual ship from the Navy. This is when the military came to the creative sector and say, help us solve a problem. How can our ships go to Europe to help the Europeans, but also not get picked off by U-boats? Is there a way that you can look at the side of a vessel and not know where the bow or the stern or the, or the middle of the boat is? Could graphic design do that? Could art history do that? Could color do that? Imagine if you apply it to a public space. Now as a teacher, that's has a curriculum with them and they want, to, uh, ask, they want to teach their youth or the community or the parents or the people in the neighborhood about Razzle Dazzle. Instead of going to a museum somewhere else, you walk outside and you look at your own building. How's that going to inspire people? How's that going to bring people together and what are those opportunities? What if that could change the world in a more simple way and going macro and micro at the same time? For me, that is fascinating, and I want to learn how to do that. So I started an organization called The Avenue Concept. And for me, it wasn't about art and design. It was about trying to create an environment where art is the byproduct, where you can bring people together to do more interesting things. The idea of a space that you think is an avenue, as you see here, having lots of layers, lots of colors, lots of complexities, but the reality is your city has this, alleyways. Spots without color, without complexities, without interesting parts and pieces. And how do you bring those people together? You can do it by adding color, by having umbrellas and simple made objects. But to do that, you need the infrastructure. Or you add more stuff. What would you do if you came around an alleyway on your commute to work and you found this? Talk to architects about chairs and art, and art design. Maybe you can't walk through this alleyway, so you have to go a different way. What would you find if you change your commute every morning? What would that do to you? So if you have a, an opportunity to engage with your public, what's going to inspire you and what if? Thank you. <laughs>